Welcome to Properties of Solids. So far, we've described solids as having strong intermolecular forces of attraction. And because of these strong intermolecular forces, we've also said that solids have tightly packed molecules and a very ordered structure. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at some of the forms that solids come in and some of the varieties and structures that we see. The first general category of solids are crystalline solids. As the name implies, these solids form crystals. An example of a crystalline solid would be an ionic salt, such as sodium chloride, which is table salt. The atoms in a crystalline solid are arranged in what we call a crystal lattice, and a crystal lattice is essentially a three-dimensional structure made up of repeating patterns. Okay, so a crystal lattice should be made up of repeating patterns of atoms. We'll take a look at what some of these patterns might be. And if we take one piece of the lattice that can be repeated in this pattern, we call that a unit cell. And because these crystal lattices are these large structures of repeating patterns, it's helpful to just consider the unit cell because that is what we know is what gets repeated over and over and over again. The unit cell is a pattern that's repeated. So there are different kinds of unit cells that we can see. To visualize what some of these unit cell patterns may look like, we can start by considering a basic cube. Now this three-dimensional shape can be defined in a few ways. One, by the length of each side. So these are the different sides on the cube. There's also three different angles that are present. There's the angle between these two sides, there's the angle between these two sides, and there's the angle between these two sides. We can call those angles alpha, beta, and gamma. In a cube, alpha, beta, and gamma all equal each other, and they all equal 90 degrees. And the side lengths in a cube are all the same. So side 1 equals side 2 equals side 3. But when we talk about three-dimensional structures, if you start changing any one of these measurements, like if you make only two sides equal to each other and make the other one longer or shorter, or if you start changing what these angles are, alpha, beta, and gamma, you start getting sort of distorted versions of this cube. So there's a lot of variety of unit cells in these crystal lattices that can possibly exist. So we're just going to focus on one aspect that gets varied. And what we're really going to be interested in is the position or the possible positions of atoms in the unit cell. Because unlike this situation up here, the positions of atoms in the unit cell, there's only really three possibilities you can have. Whereas this, there's a lot of different variation if you start changing angles and side lengths. So we're going to focus on this, the possible positions of atoms in the unit cell. So here are three representative cubes, and we're going to draw in the position of atoms to show the different possibilities that can exist. So the first possibility is just a simple cube. So the first one we're just going to call simple. And in the simple case, the position of atoms, there's one at each corner of the cube. So there's an atom here, and there's an atom here, here, and here. So in this simple configuration, there's one atom in each corner of the unit cell cube. The next kind we can have is what's called a body-centered cube. In a body-centered cube, we have the same atoms at each corner. Again, we have an atom at each corner of the cube. And we also have an atom in the very middle, exactly in the middle of this cube. And that's the body. It's body-centered. There's an atom at the center of the body of this cube. In the last configuration, we have a face-centered cube. When we talk about the face of a cube, what we're really talking about is one of the sides. So this would be one of the faces of this cube. The atoms in a face-centered cube are one on each corner, like this. And then we also have one atom at the center of each of the faces of the cube. So this one's on the center of the front face. This one's at the center of the side face. This one's at the center of the top face. And then you have the ones that are in the background. So this is the one that's in the center of the back face. This is the one that's in the center of the face on that side. And this one is in the center of the bottom face. 
And this is one of the ways that we classify crystalline solids, by the orientation or the position of the atoms in a unit cell. Now because crystalline solids have a repeating pattern, whether the pattern is simple, body-centered, or face-centered, the pattern is repeating. That means that crystalline solids are uniform throughout the entire substance. And this uniformity results in one specific melting point because all the forces and all the atoms are equally distributed throughout the entire structure. There's one melting point for the substance. Now not all solids have this crystalline structure. Some of them have a more irregular structure and we call those amorphous solids. An amorphous solid, unlike a crystalline solid, has no orderly internal structure. Some examples of this are rubber, plastic, and glass. These are solids that have no regular internal structure and we consider them amorphous solids. And because their atoms aren't in a regular structure, the intermolecular forces are unevenly distributed throughout the entire substance. And what happens is that these substances don't have a specific melting point. Which means that as you add heat, instead of melting all at once, they gradually soften. So these are some examples of amorphous solids, and we also looked at an example of a crystalline solid. And so far they've all been different substances, but sometimes the same substance can have multiple forms. So let's take a look at that. What do coal, diamonds, and number two pencils all have in common? Well, these are all substances made of the element carbon. Coal is simply amorphous carbon. Diamond is carbon in a crystalline form. And pencils, or number two pencils, are made up of graphite, which is a form that carbon takes. But each one of these three, coal, diamonds, and number two pencils, is simply just made up of carbon, and they all have really different properties because of their structure. So what we're seeing here is we have multiple possible structures, and these different structures result in the different substances having distinct properties, meaning they have properties distinct and different from each other. Now when you have this case of multiple possible structures of the same element or the same substance, in this case carbon, we call those allotropes. The first diagram we have here, we have these sheets of atoms bonded to each other. Each one of these little spheres in the structure is a carbon atom, and you can see they're all bonded to each other in these sheet formations. And they sort of form layers. So there's one sheet layered on top of another sheet, layered on top of another sheet. This is graphite. And the reason we use it in pencils is because as you write with it, the layers fall off onto the paper, and that's why you can leave behind writing using graphite. And eventually the graphite gets worn down and you have to resharpen your pencil because the layers are physically coming off of it and onto your paper. Now diamond is another allotrope of carbon. In the case of diamond, each carbon, as you can see in this picture here, each carbon is attached to four other carbons in a tetrahedral arrangement. And this repeating pattern gives diamond its crystalline structure made up of carbon. It also results in diamond having incredibly strong structural properties. It's a very hard substance because of its highly ordered structure. Now there's one more form of carbon that was discovered, and that is this one down here. It actually looks like a soccer ball arrangement with alternating pentagons and hexagons, just like a soccer ball would have. And this is called a buckyball. This is a colloquial term. It's actually called a fullerene. The real name for it is a fullerene. And this is a pretty amazing structure. This particular fullerene is carbon 60. 60 atoms of carbon bonded to each other in a hollow spherical shape. And these fullerenes have amazing properties. They're actually harder than diamond, but because of their hollow shape, they have a significantly lower density than diamond. 
So their strength per weight is incredibly high. So these buckyballs are very strong and rigid. That wraps up our lesson on the properties of solids. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.